Hi, I'm Dr. Rodney Alford. I'm a pediatrician. That means a children's doctor. And I'm here to show you some things that you may need to know at some point in time because we're going to talk about first aid. So what is first aid? That's the first question. Gonna ask. It's the aid you give when you're the first one there. That's usually what we call first aid. First aid really includes how to stay safe, and also uh, how you can keep others from, from being hurt. Or if you need to call for help, first aid is part of that as well. So calling for help is part of first aid. So we just need to remember a few things. First again, I'm Dr. Rodney Alford, a pediatrician, and I'm going to be demonstrating with my buddy, Teddy. Teddy's my guy. He's going to demonstrate some things. I'm going to demonstrate some things on Teddy that's going to show you exactly how to work with some of these things that we have here. Now, you're going to look at these things and you're going to say, I know how to use these things. Because you do. There's a lot of things that, that we have that's in the bag here in our first aid safety kit. There's some things here that you've seen many times and you know how to use them, but I'm going to show you how to use them properly. So first and foremost, I'm going to lay Teddy down here so he can rest because he's got work to do. We're going to get some great work out of Teddy. So in our bag, we have a few things here. We have some band-aids. All of us have seen band-aids. We love the band-aids that have all kinds of little shapes and figures and people on them. Uh, so band-aids are very necessary. Of course, if you're going to have band-aids, you got to have alcohol. And also, we have other types of things to help uh, to clean uh, the wounds off, okay? We have this antiseptic towelette that cleans things off. And then we also have alcohol pads. So those are part of our kit here. And then we have this antibiotic ointment. Antibiotic ointment, we'll talk about what it's used for. Basically, it's going to help you keep an infection, you know, from getting on a, on a wound or a sore. So that we're going to need that as well. And then we got some stuff here. We cause gauze bandages. Gauze bandages are basically what we're going to put on top of a, a wound if we happen to have a wound. But we're going to use that antibiotic ointment as well. So that's another thing we have. This is important. Gloves. Gloves are so important. They're fun in the doctor's office because sometimes you can blow them up and make balloons out of them, but that's not really what they're for. They're to protect you. And so we're going to show how you use the gloves at all. Those are very important when we're trying to dress a wound or we're trying to do something and we want to keep ourselves clean, keep us from giving an infection to somebody else or us from getting an infection from someone else. So gloves are going to be really important. Um, this is an ice pack or a cold pack. These things are real important if you if you hurt like a, you know a knee or elbow or something hurt. This is going to be great because you're going to use this cold pack to to cool it down if it's if it hurts. A lot of times cold helps that area, so we're going to need that cold pack in there too. Um, and we got we get this here, uh, this gauze here. This is not the same as this. This is a this is goes over the wound. This helps it stay down. Okay, so this helps the wound covering stay down. And then of course, if you have that, you have to have tape to tape it down. So we're going to talk about all these things. We're going to show you how to use all these things. These are very very important to use whenever you're dealing with first aid. Okay, first lesson: if you get hurt, clean the dirt. In other words, you got to make sure that if Teddy gets hurt, if he gets hurt, we want to make sure that we clean off the dirt first. We want to make sure that we have a, a nice, clean area before we do anything. So let's say that Teddy got a scrape on his knee, okay? He's upset, of course. And so we want to make sure it's calm down first, and then we want to wash our hands. If we're assisting Teddy, we want to make sure we're washing our hands first. Using soap and water, washing our hands, washing between our fingers, washing the backs and the fronts of our hands, making sure that our hands are nice and clean before we do anything. After washing our hands really well, we want to make sure that we get some gloves on. That's real important because the gloves protect us from getting infected and it also protects Teddy from also getting infected from something we may have on our skin. With the gloves on, now we're clean. So we want to make sure that we want to clean off the, the area, so we use one of these cleaning wipes, take it out, 
and we want to clean around the area. So we say this on his knee, so we just kind of rub and clean around the knee, make sure everything's nice and clean around there. And once it's clean, we throw this in the garbage. After doing that, we want to make sure that it's nice and dry, and we want to put this antibiotic ointment on it. The antibiotic ointment is, again, to keep it from getting dirty again. And so that's what we want to do. Or in some cases, we want to clean around with an alcohol swab. Now, alcohol swabs burn. As we know, most of us know, if you get alcohol on a sore, it's going to burn a lot. So we don't like to use a lot of alcohol on the skin, but we can do that around the area. So we want to make sure we might need the alcohol swab. Same way we do that, just tear it across the center. It pops right out just like that. And then we want to clean around. Okay, after we've cleaned it, we want to sanitize it. And that's what the alcohol swab does. It cleans it even better. It sanitizes it, gets rid of all the bacteria and everything. So, <clears throat> so now we have that in the garbage as well. And then what we want to use is this antibiotic ointment that I mentioned earlier. Uh, there's a little area to tear it off, a little notch in there, and it makes it so easy to tear. And then this gooey looking stuff here is very, very important. It's going to help to keep the area from getting uh, dirty again. So we don't want it to get dirty. We've cleaned it all off. We've kept it clean. We want to now put this on the area. I'm not going to put it on Teddy because he's really not hurt. Um, we just pretending here. So we put this on, and then after we put that on, we throw that in the garbage as well. And now we have this, this great stuff all over there, making sure that it's going to keep everything clean so that when we do, either use a bandage if it's a larger area, or a band-aid if it's a smaller area. We'll start with the band-aid first. Okay, if it's a band-aid that we're using, then we want to make sure that we open the band-aid up properly. That means so that it sticks out. We grab it on the ends here, throw this in the garbage, make sure that we open this up carefully so we don't touch the pad on the inside there. We never want to touch that pad. That's important because that's the area that we want to remain sterile. Sterile means clean. So we want to make sure that remains clean. So we want to look at the band-aid, pop this open, make sure that we don't touch it, you see, not touching it. And you want to have it like this so that you can see the area, the white area. Then you put that on. We're going to put it on Teddy, just for a second. And you spread it out like that, holding one end down. And you push it down on one side, and then you pull it off and push it down. You see, I never touch the inside of the bandage where the wound is going, and where the wound is and where the, the bandage is going. So we're gonna take this off. Thank God this doesn't hurt Teddy. He's he's very uh, very strong guy and it comes right off for him. So that's if you're using a Band-Aid. Now, as I mentioned earlier, if the sore or wound is bigger than a Band-Aid, if it's just a small area, of course we use a Band-Aid, but if it's a bigger area and we wanna cover that area better, we wanna make sure we've done the same thing that we've put the antibiotic ointment on we open this up the same way, split it open this way, make sure we only handle the very corners, just the corners, make sure. We toss this in the garbage, we make sure we only handle the corners and put it over the area and just leave it like that where the antibiotic ointment has already been placed and then if we're going to wrap it, because we don't really want to put a lot of tape on the skin, we can wrap it with this. Uh, and of course we'll have to cut it to where it's a good length. Typically we want to make sure that we're using this to put it over without touching and then tape it down or we just use the tape and tape it down on either side as well. We can do that. So that helps tremendously. Now if Teddy ha happened to hurt it and it's hurting also, you got the bandage on, it's sitting there, it's, it's doing good, but he's ha still having some pain. That's where it comes in where the cold pack is really important because it's going to help with the pain. So it's simple about the instructions on this. All you do is you shake it up, you wrap it up in a cloth, if you have a cloth available, it's very simple, and then you actually just kind of squeeze and it gets cold. It immediately gets cold for you. Um, and then you put it on the area. So 
Uh, it's a great thing whenever you're having some pain. It takes the pain away, makes things feel a lot better. And, and so that's what you want to do is put this nice cold pack over the area and it helps to get, relieve some of the pain. So that's basically what we want to do whenever you have a wound and you need to have some bandage applied to it and you also need to help with the pain. I have a few other first aid tips that I think you'll be excited about. These are really great. And I got a little rhyme to go along with each one. So pardon me while I, you know, make some fun of some of these things because it's good to think about these things in a way and sometimes just having a little bit of a rhyme helps us remember. So the first rhyme we're going to talk about and we're going to use um, Teddy, my buddy, you're going to use, we're going to use Teddy to demonstrate, um, but also you'll probably want to, you know, help have an adult show you how to do this on a real person, um, you know, so that you don't hurt anybody, uh, but I'm just giving you an idea of what these things are. So, first rhyme, when a choking victim can't talk, you got to run, don't walk. In other words, if someone is choking, that's one thing. If they're coughing and they're able to cough, leave them alone. Let them cough because most times they can cough up whatever they've, they've eaten or whatever they've gotten in their throat. So let them cough. If they can't cough and they're holding their throat or showing that they can't breathe, that's when you want to do what's called a Heimlich maneuver. The Heimlich maneuver is very simple, but I'll let your parents teach it to you. But basically it's like a hug. Basically, you hit the person and you just hug very quickly, and it allows them to get out whatever they have in. Now, if you if you have something in your mouth, you, you know you should not be running. That you've been told multiple times. So it's very important because what can happen is if you're running and you have something in your mouth, say it's food or a piece of candy or whatever, if you're running, that can go down your throat and get stuck and cause you not to be able to breathe. And someone have to do the Heimlich maneuver on you. It's not a fun thing to have someone do on you. It's not fun to do, but it's definitely not fun to have someone do on you. So, Teddy, I'm sorry, I had to do it, but it wasn't very difficult. It's basically a hug, like that, and it just pushes out. It forces air through the throat so that it pops whatever candy or food or whatever's in there out. Just remember, when a choking victim can't talk, do the Heimlich, run, don't walk. When you have a nosebleed, make sure you squeeze. In other words, if you have a nosebleed, make sure that you stop the bleeding. And the way you stop the bleeding is if it's on yourself, you just squeeze the top of your nose and hold. You don't have to hold your head any kind of way, up, down, or anything like that. Just hold it and hold it for about 10 minutes. 10 minutes is a long time. Now you can breathe through your mouth when you've squeezed your nose, so that's not a problem. And you can watch the clock and watch. For 10 minutes you want to hold it. That gives blood enough time to clot. In other words, to stop bleeding. So if it's someone else, you want to let them do it themselves. If it's someone that is too frantic or you know they just can't do it themselves, then you can help them by squeezing in the top part of the nose right here but if you do this that will actually stop the bleeding and so we want to do that so when you see a nose bleed squeeze another thing to remember when red blood is bleeding stop by squeezing so if you have a area that's bleeding say on the hand or finger you want to make sure that you stop the bleeding how you stop the bleeding just like you did with the nose you want to pinch the area squeeze it or hold it down uh, long enough, again, about 10 minutes. Watch the clock, that's how you know. You wanna make sure that you hold it down and don't let go. Don't keep checking to see if it's bleeding or not bleeding. You wanna make sure that it's gonna stop. And the way you get it to stop, 10 minutes. Watch the clock. Another thing to remember is when you're at home alone, use the phone. In other words, if you happen to be alone and something happens that scares you or something that happens that you witness that uh, that that is scary uh, you want to make sure that you get some help don't allow yourself to be alone in that call 911 talk to your parents to make sure that 
it's okay to do that and also find out what kind of issues would cause you to have to call 911. That's a very important number. It will get help to you right away. And then you need to make sure that you remember your own address so that you can tell people where you are when the person that answers 911, when they, when they ask you the question, well, where are you right now? We want to make sure that you talk slowly, calmly, make sure you talk very clearly. So remember, when you're home alone, use the phone. Another thing to remember, the sun is mean, so use sunscreen. It's hot outside, and your skin can burn very easily if you're outside for any length of time. So we have stuff called sunscreen. That sunscreen is important. It doesn't matter the complexion of your skin. You need sunscreen. Sunscreen protects your skin from getting burned by the sun. So you want to make sure that you get the sunscreen. Make sure that a parent is applying it or watching you while you put it on. But basically it goes on any area of the body that the sun can get to. Now the areas that are covered by clothing, you don't really have to worry about as much. So make sure the sunscreen is on every part of the body that's exposed to the sun because the sun is mean. Use that sunscreen. Remember, leave alone bad neck bones. In other words, if someone gets hurt, or if you get hurt, if they fall and hit their head and they feel that they have some neck pain, it's a very bad thing to try to help them up. Let them lay still, don't mess with them. Make sure that you have some adults around that can either call 911 if they need to, or if you need to call 911, then you know how to do it because we talked about that earlier. So we want to make sure that we get someone to help them. Don't move them around. So remember again, leave alone bad neck bones. If you fall on the ice, be prepared to pay the price. Just remember when you on ice, it's very simple thing to fall and hurt yourself. That can happen all the time. If your arm or your leg is hurt, you don't want to move it. So the first thing to do is remember the word price. We know how to spell price. P-R-I-C-E. Well, there's words that go along with that. P means protection. Protect the area. Hold it still. Make sure that it doesn't move. If it's your arm or the leg, don't move it. You want to keep it still and you want to make sure someone helps you to keep it still. Sometimes just a few pieces of wood that might be laying around or something else that might be laying around that can hold that arm still or that leg still, that's important. That's protection, P-R-I-C-E. The R means rest. That means you want to rest the area, not move it around, keep it in one place. The more you move it, the more likely you can cause more problems. If you have a fracture or a break in the arm, or the leg. You can make it worse if you decide not to rest it. So remember, P-R-I-C-E. I is ice. I told you before that ice really helps. It calms down the pain. It makes things not hurt as much. That's what we want to use our ice pack for. So we talked about that before. Again, price. Remember, price. P-R-I-C-E. The C is compression. Compression means to hold something still, to keep it in place and hold it tight. You want to make sure that if your leg is hurt or your arm is hurt, that there's some compression involved. So you want to hold it tight. So you want to protect it. You want to rest it. You want to ice it. And you want to compress it. The last thing in price, P-R-I-C-E, is elevation. Keeping the leg or arm up is going to decrease some of the pain. So you want to make sure that you protect it, rest it, ice it, compress it, and elevate it. All of those things spelled price, P-R-I-C-E. Don't forget it. Protection, rest, ice, compression, elevation. All those things are important when we're talking about falling, hurting an arm or a leg. So don't fall on the ice or you may have to pay the price. Well, I want to say thank you. And I know Teddy says thank you as well. Um, you're welcome. And also, we want to make sure that you're staying safe. First aid means, first of all, staying safe, making sure that you stay safe. And if things happen, and they do, first aid is very important. Remember uh, all the things that we talked about. Keep those rhymes in your head. I remember them sometimes, but it's very difficult to remember all the things that we talked about. So you can review this video over and over again until you get it down pat. We want to make sure you understand all the things that we have talked about. Again, I'm Dr. Rodney Alford. I'm a pediatrician. I love talking to children. And Teddy, 
Uh, love talking to him too. So uh, bye for now. Thank you for participating in our first aid safety virtual kids camp. We hope you enjoyed meeting our IMH pediatrician, Dr. Alford. If you'd like to make an appointment with Dr. Alford, please call our Watsika location. There will be another virtual camp coming soon for school safety, so be on the lookout for a link. For a limited time, we're also providing free kits to go with this next camp when you have your back to school physical at any of our four locations conveniently located in Watsika, Gilman, Milford, and Kentland, Indiana. This school safety kit contains some of the essential items that you will need for back to school this year, such as hand sanitizer, Clorox wipes, Kleenex, and a cloth face mask. The cloth masks have been generously donated by our hospice volunteer, Mary Jane LaFond, for this particular project. Supplies are limited, so schedule your physical today. Please visit imhrh.org to find the number of a clinic near you.